friends, Katie here from Shangri-La Gardens. Since you're not able to come to us, we wanted to come to you. Now today, we're in for a special treat. We're going on an adventure. So join me as we go on Adam's Bayou, and I tell you a little bit about the swamp and surrounding areas. Before we get started though, I have to get ready. Okay, we're set. I'll see you on board. Welcome to Adams Bayou. Adams Bayou makes up Shangri-La Garden's southwest boundary. Now, Adams Bayou has headwaters that are northwest of Orange in Mauriceville. And so the bayou twists and turns for about 15 miles or so before flowing into the Sabine River, into Sabine Lake, and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. So because it eventually empties into the Gulf of Mexico, the water in Adams Bayou is considered brackish water, meaning it's slightly salty. So as we're out on our tour today, you may notice some different pieces of litter out in Adams Bayou. And that's because Adams Bayou is the watershed for portions of Orange, West Orange, Pinehorst, and Mauriceville. And that watershed covers about 51 square miles. So anytime that there might be some litter or trash laying on the ground and we get a heavy rainstorm, that eventually ends up in Adams Bayou, like we might see on our excursion today. Adams Bayou is teeming with wildlife. Beneath the water, you'll find several different species of fish, such as gar, mullet, shad, catfish, bass, maybe some bluegill, lots of different species of fish. And flying overhead, you might see some ospreys or belted kingfishers, egrets and herons, some white ibis, cormorants, and even occasionally, believe it or not, a bald eagle. So as we're on our adventure today, keep your eyes peeled for things like turtles sunning on the logs, snakes crossing the bayou, or maybe even an alligator. There's a gator. Looky there, friends. It is an alligator. Right now, this body of water that we're on is a bayou. And the bayou is surrounded by swamp. Now, the bayou is typically a low-lying area with extremely slow-moving water, meandering, sluggish water. Um, in the case of Adams Bayou, because, as I mentioned earlier, it eventually ends up in the Gulf of Mexico, Adams Bayou is tidally influenced, meaning they have a high tide and a low tide, just like our oceans. A swamp is a forested wetland. And in our case, the swamp that is surrounding Adams Bayou is characterized as a cypress tupelo swamp. And what that means is that the very tallest trees or the upper canopy cover are either cypress or tupelo. Now you'll see that there are lots of different types of different species of trees all throughout the swamp area surrounding Adams Bayou, but those very tallest trees at upper canopy cover, they're either cypress or they're tupelo. All right, friends, as we're out here on Adams Bayou, you might be noticing some of these along the sides of the bank here. Those are called cypress knees. And scientists speculate as to what the purpose of cypress knees actually is. Some scientists think maybe it's aids in gas exchange. Some scientists think maybe it stores extra nutrients. But as far as what's been proven, this is just part of the extensive root system belonging to that bald cypress. All right, friends, so what you're looking at right here, this great big tree, is actually called the survivor tree. And those of you who've been to Shangri-La before probably know all about this tree, but if you've never been out to see it, this tree is incredibly old. And so this tree is 1,246 years old. And the reason it got the name Survivor Tree is one, because it is so old, but two, because this is actually a different species of cypress than what we have been seeing along the bayou. So the 
really tall feathery leaf cypress that we had been seeing all along here is called a bald cypress and this tree is actually a pond cypress so it makes it pretty unique down to this area. Cypress tupelo swamps are a very common ecosystem in southeast Texas. Now the cypress and tupelo trees both have really wide bases or wide buttresses at the bottom of the tree and then they slowly get thinner as the tree grows up taller. These wide buttresses make them uniquely adapted to life in a seasonally wet dry swamp. While the cypress and the tupelo trees both have those really wide bases or buttresses, they're pretty easy to tell apart. The cypress, the bald cypress, has a flat feathery needle leaf, and the pond cypress has kind of a droopy, more finger-like leaf, while the tupelo ha is a broad leaf. So they're very easy to tell apart when they have leaves on them. The buttress of the cypress is also more skirted and the tupelo is more round and smooth. All right, friends, we finally made it back to the boathouse. Thanks for coming out on the bayou with me. Thank you for joining me out on the bayou today. I hope you had as much fun and as learned as much as I did. Challenge time. I challenge you to spend 15 minutes outside today enjoying nature. Whatever you want to do, just 15 minutes outside appreciating the beauty. All right, we miss you. We're proud of you. Stay curious.